Thanks for joining us for another episode of Rice and Beans. We're here today with Mr. Akshat Gupta, and today we're going to talk about his uh, home country of... India? India. And so last time on Rice and Beans, we met with someone else from India. She was from Aurangabad, but um, Akshat is from a different place. Where yeah. are you from? I'm from New Delhi, which is in the northern part of India. And she is from central to southernish India, mm-hmm. Maharashtra, which is a huge state and also has the film industry of India. Ah, the it, film industry. It's in Mumbai, which is in Maharashtra. Mm-hmm. Yeah, last time we talked a lot about the film industry, actually. Okay. So uh, why don't we just start with what Rice and Beans is known for, which is the food. So, oh, okay. <laughs> so why don't we talk about some dishes from, um, from New Delhi, what makes it uh, specific to the region, for example? Uh, so not a very peculiar, peculiar or interesting thing about New Delhi is that New Delhi has, I mean, it has its own culture, but because of it being the capital, people from all the places come there. So maybe it's kind of New York. It definitely mm-hmm. is, uh, if you think about the number of people. So we have a lot of mixed culture. Uh, so the foods in Delhi uh, that are, I mean, that people like a lot vary from something like butter chicken, mm-hmm. uh, chicken tikka masala, chicken biryani. So butter chicken is something which is North Indian. Uh, chicken biryani is something which different parts of India has, but it's mm-hmm. more Southern Indian. And then we have something like dumplings, which we call momos, which is really uh, hip among the youth of mm-hmm. Delhi. So <clears throat> these are probably my favorites. Yeah, so at in New Delhi, so it's like the New York of India, as you said. Um, and at the beginning, we mentioned that it's North India and not yeah. not Southern India. But it seems the way that you describe the food there, that it's like a combination of both. Would it be hard to sort of characterize New Delhi as North Indian just based on if you were just dropped there mm-hmm. and you just had to explore? Yeah, I mean, it, it is more <laughs> North Indian. So because uh, the pe- people in South, so there are two or three epicenters of where people go, like New Delhi is one, which is mostly North Indian. Mm-hmm. Mom- Bombay is another one, which has a few South Indians, but sent people from central part of mm-hmm. India. Bangalore is another one where most South Indians are. So New Delhi is more North Indian than from every part of the country. Mm-hmm. But the food, I mean, it's uh, all from all of the place. So oh, Yeah, that sounds interesting. It sounds hard to get bored over there with the, yeah, <laughs> with sure. the cuisine. Yeah. Um, so something else. So... Since we're drawing this parallel between New Delhi and New York, um, New York is vibrant with culture. Mm-hmm. And I, I believe in similarly that New Delhi would also have just a mix of culture that would go alongside the mix of food. And when I say culture, I mean the arts, primarily music, uh, mm-hmm. film, I guess, dance. Yeah, I mean, uh, there is no there is there isn't much uh, when you talk about films in New Delhi. Uh, so it's, it's the capital and uh, a lot of things that happen are I mean it's kind of uh, how things are in New Delhi has a parallel uh, to more to DC I mean you have the president and the prime minister living there Mm -hmm. and stuff like that but the food definitely is a mixed up in culturally it's very mixed up Uh, so talking about arts I think the music and different things are from all over the country but Truthfully, I don't know too much about the dance, mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, I mean, it's not like we're not known for art. Oh, okay. So, so what do you do for fun over there? We, uh, for fun. Besides I, eat. Besides eating. I mean, it's just nothing, actually. Hmm, nothing? We do nothing. I mean, we, it's like you go out in the night yeah. uh, to bars, clubs. What are bars some, like over there and clubs? It's pretty similar. It's pretty similar to America. So New Delhi is somewhat, in that sense, uh, westernized ah. a, a lot. In the, I mean, it's westernized as well as Indian. I mean, it's a mix. So people go to bars or go out to eat food. I mean, there, there are also theater, there is also theater gigs and stuff like that happening. I'm not, I'm not into it. Hmm. I'm pretty sure there are a lot of things. Is there stand up over there? Oh yeah, it's not, there's stand up over there. Hmm. So. In India, stand-up happens in Bombay, Delhi, and maybe Bangalore is another city. But yeah, stand-up's growing quite fast in Delhi. Mm-hmm. And what, what languages do they speak in New Delhi? New Delhi, it's mostly Hindi, which is uh, 
kind of the most popular language in india mm-hmm. uh, but it's mostly hindi because it's the northern part of india so the northern part of india speaks hindi a lot the southern part of india uh, do not speak hindi so much so when you go to the southern part of india if you have to communicate you have to talk in english because mm-hmm. uh, that's what they adopted uh, they didn't want to learn another language which i totally get mm-hmm. because yeah, i lived a year in germany i did not learn german because i knew i'd have to i mean i was wasn't going to use it in the future so mm-hmm. similarly they knew that uh, they'd need english more than hindi so in the south it's more english in the north and especially in delhi it's mostly hindi but that's good to know yeah but there are all sorts of people in there so you find all the language being spoke languages being spoken when pe- two people from the same place meet or mm-hmm. uh, in their homes but mm-hmm. it's mostly hindi so when you talk about two people meeting in their homes this just makes me think now of um something that is associated i guess with indian culture is the culture of arranged marriage okay. would you be able to tell us a little bit about that because over here you know it's yeah. all about choice and freedom in america you know yeah and a lot of people see arranged marriage as like a bad as a negative thing as a bad thing you know you're uh-huh. you're forced to be with someone you don't like uh no i wouldn't say it's you're forced to be with someone you don't it's i mean that's the wrong definition of arranged marriage in my opinion that you're forced to be with someone you don't like but it 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 is also not uh totally false in the sense that uh i mean it's kind of a stereotype since stereotypes stem from some kind of a truth some kind of truth mm-hmm. but what arranged marriages are in india right now in my opinion is that people meet uh through their parents or through websites or through contacts and These they websites what are those like uh just uh so like you have tinder so we have tinder for marriages ah. i mean it's websites for marriages so yeah. looking no bullshit no dates i mean just see the people mm-hmm. see the person go meet them a few times so are, are the parents using this website or are the the candidates i think they use it together uh ah. as a as a team okay that's so, good so but arranged marriage is more like it, there is a choice there the only problem there is that there you do not get get to watch uh, the trailer in an arranged marriage you just have to see the whole movie and you don't know if you like it or not but there is a I choice see. i mean you still have the choice of going into the theater uh, you kind of the group i mean the guy and the girl they talk to each other they meet each other they tell if they like each other or not mm-hmm. and then usually people proceed but yeah i mean there is a risk of uh, which is also there if you have if you're dating for like 10 years mm-hmm. and you still end up being divorced or marriage is not working yeah out. so would you say it's more of um it's a union additionally as sorry the arranged marriage is also a union of the families oh yeah that's true because marriage in india is a big deal i'm pretty sure it's here as well mm-hmm. but there it's uh so here the difference i noted was that the kids or the uh, people getting married do everything so they invite their parents and all mm-hmm. but in india it's the parents who do everything they're emotionally invested financially invested in the marriage and also i mean kind of their reputation is at stake it's kind of how the culture is so marriage is a really important thing mm-hmm. in india and so it definitely is a union of two families mm-hmm. because everybody is so that's why marriages in india are harder in the sense that when you get married to a person you get married not just to them but to the whole family and the more people there are the more variables there are so mm-hmm. it becomes chaotic at times but mm-hmm. yeah this makes it seem very interesting in terms of you ready for this for like making a soap opera or mm-hmm. just tv shows using this as a similar plot for generating conflict yeah. or romance or something uh do they have soap op- i mean they probably have soap operas over there right yeah. um are they you know are they popular oh yeah i mean i don't know uh because this uh this chaotic uh thing called arranged marriage had i mean it's a cycle is it stressful uh the, the marriage is definitely oh, that's, I mean, that's it's, a dumb it's question true yeah it's true everywhere but there are definitely soap operas that just revolve around a married um uh, the married life of a woman mm-hmm. or a man and their conflicts with the uh their partners families mm-hmm. and these soap pop i mean these tv series or these soap operas have been going on for like 20 
years. I've been seeing it since I was a child. Mm -hmm. And the same plot, the exact same story with different younger people mm -hmm. have been going on in cycles for the past 23 years. And mm -hmm. it's really popular. I, I think they kind of, people kind of enjoy it. People eat something to you know. Yeah, yeah. Past it's just interesting years. to see what... <clears throat> because soap operas seem to be ubiquitous anyway around the world. Yeah. But what they focus on is different around the different cultures. For example, I know from personal experience that the Latino soap operas just mm -hmm. tend to focus a lot on betrayals and oh, those types yeah. of and that's where the conflict is generated, you know, um people being people expressing infidelity mm -hmm. or just intense passion. And it, it's just interesting because they reflect something about the culture in what they tend to focus on. So uh, I just thought that was a, a pretty interesting yeah, I mean, in India, we have a lot of soap operas just dealing with uh, married life yeah. and the nuances of married life and how, I mean, it's, I don't know, it's like, it's usually the girl who goes to the guy's house. So mm. how the life of a wife is in a different house that's not hers and how she deals with the guy's mm -hmm. families, they're all like... Uh, ton of soap operas that deal just with that and mm -hmm. they've been going on for like years mm -hmm. and they're still they'll probably still go on for more yeah i bet they will keep milking that for yeah. <laughs> so many more decades um so something that this so it makes me think of stress and mm -hmm. with stress comes mental health issues mm -hmm. what is the perception of mental health in india that is i mean it's mental health in some sense like is, do they see it as an actual pathology like a disease or mm -hmm. do they attribute it to some other factors maybe like personality or even spiritual so uh i mean i would if i comment on this i first of all i should I should also say that i'm not competent enough to comment on this but mm -hmm. in my opinion it's uh, uh a bit different in india because uh a lot of the mental health issues kind of come from uh being lonely and in india you hardly ever alone mm -hmm. you so either you mm -hmm. have always people around you or things to deal with which can kind of keeps the mind occupied but mm -hmm. i think uh in terms of recognizing that men mental health is a problem which needs to be first of all respected and then uh treated in some sense is slowly picking up for sure i mean i don't i there's also this thing that i would say is that people don't have time for mental health problems they have way I mean, they have bigger problems like uh, what I'm going to eat tonight. I mean, mm. can I get food tonight or mm -hmm. uh, will I be able to feed my children? And what's my child going to do? He's mm -hmm. turning four. Can I put him in a school? Mm -hmm. So most of the I think it's I mean, it's slowly getting recognized as uh, something that should be respected mm -hmm. if somebody has such, such a thing. But a lot of the people don't have time to uh, deal with it. And mm -hmm. I, mean, yeah. I mean, when you're busy, you're kind of. Uh, kind of don't pay attention to it that much. Yeah, I guess so. That makes sense. Thanks for sharing. Um, next, on the note of spirituality, mm -hmm. can we talk a little bit about the religions that you, yeah. at least that you've experienced, that mm -hmm. you've seen other people practicing around you in New Delhi? Because there's uh -huh. probably a lot around there. Oh yeah, there are, every religion uh, there is. Uh, it, I can. I mean, there is in India. It's there in Delhi. Mm -hmm. And the major one is Hinduism, which is like, I think, 70% of the people mm -hmm. or more than that. Then we have Islam, which is like 20, 30 percent of the people, mm -hmm. uh, 20, 25. And then we have some minor religions as Sikhism, uh, Christianity, Jainism. It's another religion. It's I don't know if you guys have it here. It's mm -hmm. it's more closely related to Buddhism, but it's also different. And any Jews? Not that. I have heard of. I mean, hmm. there there might be, but they're probably not. I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, I've never heard the term Jews in India. Hmm. I've uh, we have somebody, some people call Zoroastrians, but I don't know who they are. I I don't think I don't know if they're related to Jews. Yeah, Zoroastrianism. Um, it's definitely separate. Yeah, <clears throat> but it's different. It's 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 interesting and um, something that comes out in pop culture a lot is how there's cows walking around on the streets i guess is this does this happen in new delhi as well and mm -hmm. what relation is it to the religion uh so it's not doesn't really happen in delhi anymore but the cow is a really holy animal in hinduism mm -hmm. and uh i kind of have all my life tried to figure out why it is so uh but uh, 
I think I found out why it is so because uh, the cow, so a lot of Indian food uh, is derived from cows and the milk and we make a hundred things from milk and uh, so it was kind of when I read some, I did a history course and they kind of thought, I mean, my interpretation of the text was to not kill the cow, it's holy because it gives you so much Mm -hmm. and just, I mean, when you're getting so much out of a cow, just, you know, respect her and then it just i mean if somebody writes some has some logic of writing down something in a holy text then people take it too seriously mm-hmm. and but yeah but definitely not a lot of cows in delhi but mm-hmm. pr- i'm pretty sure there are in other parts of india okay well thanks for clarifying that <laughs> and all right so we're reaching the end of mm-hmm. this episode so uh thank you very much for coming and being on the show Thanks for having me, Isaac. Yeah, and it's um, it was great learning a different side of India. Mm-hmm. So I hope we'll be able to get further episodes from people from even more, di- even more different parts. Um, so yeah, thanks again, and thank you guys for tuning in. This has been yet another episode of Rice and Beans. Don't forget, we have those musical selections. They're all cooked up and ready to ship out in the weekly meal playlist and in that big 500 plus song playlist, the To Go Box. Thanks again for tuning in. This has been Rice and Beans with Akshat. Thank you for having me, Isaac.